Hey guys, welcome to my Etsy channel. This is Nancy from nancybadijo.com and welcome to another episode of Etsy Shop Critique. So today I'm going to be doing a critique on the store called JMZ Creations. Um, just want to make sure to let you guys know that any tools that I currently use or any resources that I talk about on this video are all linked below the video and you'll be able to find the links of the resources that I currently use plus additional links to other places that are very helpful for XC sellers and don't forget to click below to get um, to subscribe to my free XC library where you will get um, additional resources and checklists that I'll be adding every month for free to improve the quality of your shop so don't forget to join below so let's go ahead and get started so I'm gonna be doing a critique and what I normally do is when I do a critique I pick a particular listing and I kind of go through everything from SEO listing description the photo um, and the curation of your shop so I actually gonna start with this actual listing is a print of a lighthouse um, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I always talk about on a XE review is the photo. The reason why is because the photography or the or the photo of your listing is one of the most important elements when it comes to selling on an e-commerce platform. And the reason why is because when people are buying online, all they have to to go by is your photo. They can't grab the actual product, they can't wear it, they can't use it, they can't touch it to see how it feels. So all they have to go by is the actual photo. So the photo um, has to illustrate or showcase your product. They have to be able to see the product and recognize exactly what they're getting. It has to be a beautiful, compelling photo to make them want to click and learn more about this particular product. Um, it has to be cropped in a complimentary way I think that you know you do have beautiful items and you do have um, a, um, beautiful items basically but what I wanted to say is you need to showcase them to show the person exactly what they're getting so my first suggestion would be that instead of just having the picture of the lighthouse like this I would say have it in a mock-up you could go to creativemarket.com I have the links below and you could actually buy a frame mock-up to put this actual printing on. Um, if I was browsing through Etsy and I stumble upon your listing, I wouldn't really know if I'm getting, it does look like a painting, so I wouldn't know that much. But I wouldn't know if, if this is a, a digital print, if it's an actual Canva, if it's a print, just from the looks of it, right? It can confuse some people. So what I would recommend is having it on a frame doing multiple pictures of different colors of frames, so showcasing it in different colors, and also showcasing it in an actual living room or wherever you think it will go best, in the bedroom or somewhere, but showcasing it in an actual style scene. The reason why is because some people are visual learners, so if they get to see the product, you know, on top of a mantle or on top of a couch, you know, like behind a couch, um, they'll be able to picture it in their home and see if this type of print will work for their home. So that's the first thing I would suggest. You want to make sure that you add additional photos. Um, XE gives you 10 listing photos. I would take advantage of all 10 or as many as you can. Minimum 5 I would say. And then I will also add a call to action photo. And the photo is just a call to action saying, you know, click below to learn more about this product or Click below to view listing, uh, matching items, if you have any matching items, anything you want to put, but just telling the customer what to do next. That way they don't leave your listing and they continue browsing in your store. The longer they stay in your store, the chances of them possibly buying from you or liking something that you currently have. That way later you could go ahead and mark it back to them. However, you definitely need to work on adding more photos, showcasing your product a better so they could understand exactly what they're buying, of showcasing it on a style scene, like I said, and then adding call to actions as well. Now, the second thing I wanna talk about is 
SEO. SEO, also known as search engine optimization. So if you are um, an XE seller like yourself that's been around for a while, or if you're a new XE seller, you, you're going to start noticing that SEO is crucial to the success of people finding your products. So SEO helps people find your products when they search for something on the Google search engine, whether it's Google, Yahoo, Bing, or whether they go to Pinterest or Etsy or any other search engine. So therefore, when somebody types in a keyword, um, a list of products show up or products or services. And with the goal of getting found as an SEO organically, the goal of it is to be to be found in the first page of that XC or the first page of that search result. Um, you don't want to be buried um, on page 300 or 200 because or even five because a lot of people they might go to page one, maybe page two. And after that, a lot of people just decide from those two pages, they're not going to continue going to page three, four and five. So um, I highly recommend investing in in XE rank on the actual um, pro um, pro software that they have they have the free one and have the they have the pro and the reason why I say the pro is because it does give you more metrics um, when you are doing keyword research um, now looking at your keywords I did an audit on it and you did a good job in trying to find keywords that describe your item so in that sense you did an excellent job the only issue is that a lot of these keywords, the volume, the search for it per month are very, very low. And also the engagement is very low. That means that a lot of people are not engaging if they do find this type of prints. And on top of that, the volume is very low. So for instance, if you have, um, when you do research, if you see one that says unknown, that means that there's not enough data collected for them to measure the value of how much is the search or how many people are searching for that product monthly. So the same with this one. So anything that has unknown, I will automatically remove because that means that they don't know how many people are searching for it because it's so low, they don't really report on it. Now, what you also wanna make sure is that you don't wanna use one, a keyword that is too broad. So a sunset could be pretty much be anything. It could be a sunset print like what you're selling or it could be a sunset, I don't know, earring or something. Um, if you were to go to xc.com and you type in the word sunset, you're going to notice that it's going to showcase a lot of different products. That's the reason why is because this is a, it's a keyword that's too broad. So therefore, um, it has 127,000 people using sunset. So therefore, not only are you using a keyword that's too broad, you're using a keyword that's too oversaturated so you're not going to be found in the search results and on top of that you're fine you're using a keyword that is too broad so therefore you're not targeting your target audience you're showing you're showing your product to anybody and everybody so therefore um you're not going to get the sale right because you're not showing it to people that actually want to buy and then if you were to run a campaign and you were to do um a promoted listing on Etsy your cost per bid is going to be a lot higher because there's more people competing for that particular keyword. And a lot of times you just waste money anyways because on top of that, you're not targeting your audience. So therefore, now you're just spending more money on a keyword that's oversaturated and on top of that, a keyword that doesn't target your audience. So what I highly recommend is that you go back and you redo your listings. You want to make sure that when you are picking a good keyword that it has a healthy amount of searches per month, that it also have um, some engagement. You don't want to have too much engagement because if it's very high in engagement, the probability of it being oversaturated is always is always the, the issue. So you want to have a balance of, you know, you don't want it to be oversaturated in the sense that you're competing with 100,000 people, right? You want to keep it um, underneath 10,000 if you can, but then you also want the search volume that, you know, people are actually looking for this product. So, you know, anywhere from, let's say 200 to 800 or more, as long as the competition is low, right? 
Um, and then you want to have some type of engagement, which means that people are engaging with these type of listings. People are, you know, looking at the listing, clicking, learning more to see if they want to go ahead and close out the sale. So I recommend redoing your tags. Um, keep in mind that tags are important because um, whether you work on the photos and you get these amazing mock-ups, that's not going to do anything if your photo, right, um, doesn't, I'm, I'm sorry, if your SEO is not driving the right people. So you definitely want to go ahead and do that. You definitely want to work on that. Um, once you have your new keywords, um, what I would suggest is writing a compelling title. So yeah, it's fine if you write Lighthouse Print, but you also want to write a compelling title that when people see this, they want to click on it and learn more. You also want to make sure that the first 155 characters, which is considered in the meta description, that you keep, you include the main keyword there, but that you also write a descriptive meta description. This is your meta description. And it's the first 155 characters of your actual listing. So therefore, um, when you write your meta description, it as, as you have it right now, people, when they find you on Google, this is what they're seeing. They're seeing the sizes, the resolution, and that's all they're seeing, the price. But they don't, they're not going to want to click on it because they're not reading an enticing um, description of what you sell. So what you want to do is go back and, and fix that. That way, um, when, when people find your product, right, online, they see it, they feel enticed to click on it. And they feel enticed to buy from you. But you definitely want to work on that as well. And then what you want to do as a on-page SEO factor is that you want to take your keywords and you want to put them in the, in the top the listing description. And you want to put them throughout your um, listing as well. And then you want to take the keywords and make sure that you have all 13 keywords in the bottom. So you did a good job here because you have all of them there. Um, but you definitely want to sprinkle the keywords in your listing description, making them sound natural. You don't want to, you know, do stuffing keywords and then it doesn't sound natural at all. So you want to make sure that it sounds natural, that they fit in there. And this is going to help you optimize your page um, to get found for additional keywords. And this is how um, Etsy knows what your page is about and what it's relevant with. So that's another tip you want to do. Um, keep in mind that SEO is very, very important. It's something that um, once you learn and you start practicing over time, it does take a, a few times to get it. But then once you start doing it all the time and examining your data and reviewing your, your SEO and doing keyword search, you'll get better and better and better with it. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is your listing description. So your listing description is basically anything and everything about that particular listing. So you want to make sure that you include anything that the customer, the potential customer might have a question about. You want to include like the color, the size, shipping policy if you have any, um, return policy if you have any. Um, in this scenario, I believe that this is a digital download. So I don't necessarily think you need a shipping policy. I apologize about that. But just having anything and everything the customer might think of. So I do like the fact that, you know, you say this this download includes and then you have all the different sizes. Um, I do like the fact that, you you know, you talk about having high quality photos in JPEG format. Um, I do like the fact that you have, you know, how to order. That's important, especially with digital downloads, I feel like. A lot of people have a, a hard understanding of how to download them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you did a good job of letting them know, you know, what to expect, what comes included, about refunds. Um, so in that sense, you did really good. I think you just have to um, write a better description in the sense of tackling your emotional buyers. So um, what I would recommend is just writing, writing an enticing um, description of whatever you're selling and letting, you know, and, and just writing like a story. And this is, um, your listing description is a way to showcase your product, showcase your voice and kind of give your product and your 
Etsy shop a little bit of a personality. So um, that's going to seal the deal. So keep in mind that the photo is what made the person click on it. SEO is how they found the photo. And the listing description, it gives some credit. It gives the customer credibility, trustworthiness. And this is when they go ahead and purchase from you because they feel comfortable. They read everything. You are very clear and transparent. So therefore, and you make the sale easier to sell. So you want to make sure that you write a compelling story about whatever product you're selling. That way people feel like they need to buy it. Um, now, the last thing I want to talk about is the curation of your shop. And the curation of your shop is basically the overall, overall look of your shop. Um, the first thing I noticed when I came to your shop is that you don't have a photo up here. You do have one in the, um, I think in the about me section or the policies. I thought I saw one. Maybe not. I apologize. Let's see. Give me one second. What I recommend is always adding a photo. Um, keep in mind that when people shop on Etsy, they're shopping on Etsy because it's unique. They're shopping on Etsy because they want something custom made. They know that they're not going to be able to get a, a custom made product or service anywhere else but Etsy. So they really do want to connect. This is not eBay or Amazon that people buy and they don't care who they're buying from. I think on 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 Etsy or handmade on um, places, it's more personal. People want to know who you are. They want to know your your backstory, why you started Etsy, what motivates you, what inspires you, um, how did you get started, like what companies do you use with your products, how. You know, they want to know all this stuff. So what I recommend is using the same photo if you like. This is an actual really good photo of yourself showcasing your beautiful face. Put it up here. Let people know who you are. Um, I will work on getting a banner if you can. You can make it yourself using any software like Photoshop or gonna canva.com. Or you could hire someone. I have links below where you could hire someone and pay them $5 for a banner. And you could easily make a custom banner for your shop that is going to make your shop look a little bit nicer. It's going to give it a little pop. What you got to think about is there's so many stores, right, on Etsy. What makes your store better than everyone else's? Why should I buy from your store, right? Like, what, why, what makes your store different from all the other millions of stores on Etsy? That's the bottom line. So if you want to make sales on Etsy and you want to you know, um, be really good at it. That's the first thing you got to think. You have to separate yourself from the competition. What makes you special? What makes you different? And then from there, um, you have to make the adjustments, whether you pay for it or you learn how to do it yourself or you pay someone else to do it. If it's too much work for you or you don't have the time or, or the energy to do, which I, I totally get it because Sometimes I pay other people to do certain stuff because it might not be my, you know, like something that I'm good at and someone else could do it for me and they do it quicker, faster and better. So highly, highly recommend doing that. Um, I also recommend adding categories, more categories. Um, keep, keep in mind that um, an SEO on page factor, if you use these different categories, and you use um, different keywords in them, it actually helps you um, with SEO um, and getting found and ranking. So I highly recommend um, adding categories and then those categories researching keywords that describe the items that you put in those categories, but therefore also rank for those keywords as well, therefore driving more traffic to your shop and increasing the likelihood of getting more sales because you're optimizing your page with additional um, SEO and additional keywords. So highly, highly recommend doing that. Um, your return and exchange policy, I will write a little bit more, but I mean, you, you did pretty good with it, um, but I will write a little bit more. I don't see that you have an about me section. I will add one. Only, like I said earlier, um, buying on Etsy is more personal. People want to get to know you. They want to know who they're buying from. So it's just a nice thing if you are able to add an About Me section so people can know who they're buying from. Um, and then also developing your brand colors. 
and the creation of your shop. So the brand colors are basically, um, does it look like it comes from the same shop? If I saw this photo here on Etsy search result and I found this one, do I remember your brand? Do I say, oh, that's from that, that store that I love. That's from, you know, J and Z creations. Are people going to remember you or are people going to be like, oh no, I think that's from two different stores, right? That's how you create a brand. People remember you. You have the same colors, the same patterns, the same look, maybe use the same mock-up, but that's standing out. That's creating a brand and growing your business. You definitely want to work on that um, because you currently um, don't have that. However, it's an easy, it's a fix. Once you start fixing your pictures and showcasing them, like let's say in the mock-ups like we talked about, that's where you will go ahead and um, start using the different colors and trying to create a sense of unity and making it all cohesive. So these are my tips for your shop. Guys, I'm trying to create a sense of community where we all come together and we help each other. There's enough room for everyone to grow on Etsy. So if you have any tips on this particular store, anything that you recommend, please leave the tips below. Leave a comment below, like. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video with anyone else that might need it. And make sure to subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for new videos. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching, and you guys have a terrific night.